Hey there folks and friends, Connecting Dots here. It's Monday, October 29th. Here's your five day forecast for Hurricane Sandy, your Frankenstorm, unbelievable here. I got a lot of stuff, historical data, nuclear threat, unbelievable what's going on. There's already been a nuclear event. I got a lot of stuff here, a lot. I'm gonna have to race through it. I hope uh, you share it with your friends. Before I get into this, breaking news here, the MTA reports four feet of water in East River Subway. I'm gonna leave a link to everything I talk about in the description box. Uh, just click on show more and everything's there. Okay, Stan Sandy here has made landfall this evening and it continues to push a huge storm surge onshore in New Jersey and New York. The MTA has reported that the East River subway has flooded with four feet of seawater. Okay, I got a lot of stuff. I got to move along, folks. Sorry, I tried making this video a lot of times here and I keep running out of time. So this is the five-day forecast here from Weather Underground here. I'm going to have to pay attention how they're showing here how the uh, hurricane is going to go deep inside and up on, on all the way up to Lake Ontario, uh, you know, it's going to hit Ontario all the way up to Quebec, Ottawa, Quebec, Montreal, uh, you know, all the way out to uh, Gaspé, uh, New Brunswick. Uh, one of the interesting things here I've, I've picked up here, they're saying from the eye of the storm to the outer edge is 1,500 kilometers. That's 935 miles wide. So that means from one edge to the other edge, the, the, the whole path of destruction is roughly 1,800 miles wide. Okay, so like I said, you want to pay attention here. They're saying this is cutting in because I'll be trying to, well, not necessarily debunk it, but um, I'll be talking about that. And also, you may have noticed here how it's color-coded. So they're saying it's going to be landing in at 75 to 95, although I've only report on 95 miles an hour was the crane that fell down in New York City was hit at 91 miles an hour. But the rest of it is coming in in the, in the green and the blue, which is uh, 39 to 73 miles an hour, and the blue is 40 miles per hour. Okay, moving along, got a lot of stuff here. So this is an ensemble of uh, computer forecast models, and they're all saying the same thing here. Cuts in deep, hits a landfall here, goes in sharp, then starts going all the way up past Lake Ontario, all the way up to Rouen Oranda, I mean, you know, Lac Saint-Jean, it's gotten up to uh, Ottawa, Montreal, uh, Rive Nord of uh, Quebec, you know, Gaspé, all the way here. Unbelievable. Okay, so this again here, this is uh, the forecast of hurricane, sorry, I should say, uh, historical data from 1851 to the year 2011, hurricanes category one, category two only, for the month of October only, 1851 to 2011 and they also show you the path of Hurricane Sandy and you notice how she's behaving a little odd compared to all the other ones that happen to swing in here go in deep and then curve back out you know they all kind of do that same movement Sandy no she's kind of wibbly wobbly well actually you'll see her better on the next picture here here she is here she started here October 22nd she's kind of gone up wobbled over here was instead of going straight up, she's cut in sharp here. Now, you know, if you didn't see that video I put up here a couple of days ago, uh, well, yeah, it'd be, I guess, two days now, it's called Hurricane Sandy, Frankenstorm, man made using harp, chemtrails, and it was predicted in 1997. Now, I'll get into that predicted 1997 in a second, but first, I want to play a short clip here. If you didn't see this video, I'll leave a link down below to the video itself, as the name says. I just want to play a short clip here if you haven't seen this, it's kind of important. ...on in these loops that uh, I want to point out. Persistent jet aerosol lined up northeast to southwest, completely out of context and not aligned with any of the other features in this loop. Next we see retrograde aerosol deployment over the storm on the north side. Everything is moving from west to east except this aerosol deployment that is moving east to west. And here is this morning's IntelliCast. Here is the wide view. And look at this section right here. This is another retrograde filling of aerosols from east to west. Keep your eye on this. You'll also see some persistent jet aerosols in the field. Right to left. There's little doubt that this storm is being intensely geoengineered. The consequences of what's happening right now will be felt at landfall on the other end. This is basis for a class action suit, loss of life and property. If enough people in these states and the affected areas become aware that this storm has been manufactured, 
If you or someone you know may be interested in looking into options for class action suit, legal litigation, click the link in the comments section and visit our site on Facebook. Okay, I'll leave a link to this stuff, but basically the idea here is that they can steer storms, they can make it, they create it, whatever they want. Okay, and they predicted 1997, well, basically they had a drill in 1997 on a hurricane, a potential uh, hurricane that would uh, hit the uh, eastern seashore, and it was called Hurricane Sandy, oddly enough. And guess what month it came by? Yeah, unbelievable. In October, the whole drill took place in October, and it's exactly the same scenario. Hurricane comes up the coastline and slams into New York. New York is in the dark, folks. I'm not going to play this whole thing. You'll have to leave a link. I got a lot of stuff. I've made this video like five times. I keep running out of time because I got too much material to cover. Okay, I'm going to leave this. I'm going to play this for one time also. And that's it. The other times I played it a couple of times. It's basically just radar footage here of it slamming into the coastline. It's going to play one time, one more time, and that's it. I got a lot of stuff. I got the nuclear stuff. I got Minnesota, Wisconsin. Boy, oh boy. Okay, so what's interesting about this? All past data from the tracks, the trajectory paths of past hurricanes from 1886 to 1996. Interesting, interesting. They all start the same way, they all kind of curve the same way, and they all kind of head back out. Now, what I want, I was asking you earlier to pay attention was how they're saying they're going to curve in. How come all these models are forecasting it to go in all the way up to Lake Ontario, you know, up to Ottawa, uh, like I said, uh, even out of Quebec, uh, you know, even Quebec City, there's not a single uh, hurricane here from, and these are all the months, remember, these are all the months all together from 1886 to 1996, and not a single earthquake has ever gone, a uh, hurricane has ever gone up in that area. An awful lot on the eastern uh, seashore, though. Okay, so what's good here is that Arnie Gunderson, yoo he's brought something to light here. The biggest problem, he says, I see is the Oyster Creek uh, nuclear plant on uh, shores of Jer near Jersey Shore. No way to cool the spent fuel when the power is out. You know, uh, uh, the reactor in Fukushima, the Mark I reactor in Fukushima, the United States has 24 of the exact same models of reactors in the Oyster Creek model. Of reactor is a Mark One, the exact same one. It has a spent fuel on the second floor, just like Fukushima. Exact same stuff. Okay. So, in this article here was uh, it came out at 10:30. They were talking about how the roads next to the New Jersey nuclear plant they were flooded. Now, nothing to be alarmed. I mean, they could still get to the plant, but they're worried that the water was rising. And here's where the flood was taking place, 10,000 feet away from the nuclear plant. You can see the water here curves all the way around. So there was concern. And Arnie brought up another good, very good concern is the fact that there's 26 nuclear plants in the area where the Hurricane Sandy is likely to hit. He says if there's a loss of power, the only plan is to let the spent fuel pools heat up, no generators to pump water in. So he was concerned about the one on Jersey, rightfully so. You know, and, and there's already an event here that's taking place. I'm going to read that in a second here. But look at all these other nuclear plants. This is to, uh, from the uh, Radiation Network uh, map. These are all people have their Geiger counters, and every one of those dots is a nuclear plant. Look how many are just around New York. Oh, this is refreshing, by the way. So you're catching it live here. So that Geiger counter just went up. Was that a 58 or a 50? Went up to 77. Look at the one outside of Philadelphia, 77. That's 77 counts per minute. The alert level is 100 counts per minute. Look at all these other nuclear plants. Pickering on Lake Ontario. Uh, what's the other nuclear plant? I can't remember. Uh, Oswego and the other one in the U.S. I can't remember the name of that one either. I mean, if they're, if this goes up, like they're saying, all the way up here, this St. Lawrence Seaway, I mean, there could be a lot of troubles here. Okay, uh, I got a lot of stuff to cover here, and one of the things I've talked about is the financial collapse. They're already talking about this in the mainstream media. Go out there and buy your silver. I know it's an odd thing, but go out and get some uh, physical silver, preferably Canadian maple leaf silver coins. You can make some colloidal silver. It's an immune booster. During these tough times, you'll be able to keep your health nice and strong and save your wealth. Get out there now. I'm telling you, we're going to have a market crash. They're putting it on mainstream news. I'll show that in a second. I got a clip for that. I only have a few minutes left. I got to move along. Okay, so you think I'm making it up about the nuclear stuff? Here it is right here. 
they're already concerned. Nuclear plant shuts down uh, the unit as a storm hits the coast. I can't read the entire article here, but basically uh, the oldest nuclear power plant in New Jersey's oyster plant was already out of service for scheduled refueling, but a high water levels at the facility which sets along the burning of prompt officials to declare an unusual event around 7 p.m. About two hours later, the situation was upgraded to an alert, second lowest in a four-tiered warning level. So they're very concerned about this, folks. You know, even at the other nuclear plant here, Indian Point, you know, they've got, they're mentioning how they, uh, one of these nuclear plants went, has diesel fuel enough for two weeks in case of power shortages because there are already there's already power shortages and I've already said there's already a, a nuclear event here. It, it, this is reported here, oldest nuclear power plant put on alert due to storm driven high waters. You know, they're talking about how the waters went up high and. Again, another alert here. U.S. declares alert at Oyster Creek Nuclear Plant, New Jersey. Just so you know, I'm not making up this stuff here. I'm not trying to fear monger, but I'm trying to bring to light here that we've got a storm here, and they're talking about a wide path of destruction, many nuclear plants in a way. Here we are the first night. Hurricane storm uh, surges in New York. It floods the tunnels, cuts the power. Over a million New Yorkers out of power. Uh, they're talking about the financial district is flooded and this is what I'm talking about this next clip here mainstream media always puts it out in advance they're telling you right now I think there's gonna be a market crash Obama's gonna to have to ask for another bailout it'll give you guys a reason to kick his ass out vote another guy in another winner who's gonna what bring you down the same losing path of bailouts after bailout they know it's crashing they gotta blame it on something they're gonna blame it on the storm here we go here watch listen up is it to doubt them as you say that boss and if the water is in that uh, up to that level in the stock exchange then yes it will have very very severe consequences i mean the figures that are being banded around here for the for the potential cost of hurricane sandy are, are quite astronomical they're talking uh, damage estimates or cost uh, of around 10 to 12 billion dollars which is awful which is an awful lot of money as well and at the, the same time we should say that uh, there's also power outages across uh, the whole of new york and new jersey as well uh, one of the most famous skylines that Manhattan skyline uh, synonymous all over the world with the Empire State Building and all. Okay, so he goes on to talk how that, that skyline, the crane, is toppled over. They've got winds of 91 miles per hour. Okay, so like I was saying here, the stock market, the hurricane shuts down the stock market for two days, the first time in 124 years. Folks, I think they're getting ready for this. They're going to blame it on the darn storm. Here we go again here with the power outages. It's going to affect the economy, blah, 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 blah. Okay, Manhattan goes dark. See the stunning photos of New York underwater. Like I said, I'm going to leave all the links to all this stuff here because I have to end the video, unfortunately. They only let me upload 15 minutes at a time on my Connecting Dots uh, 2 channel. I got a Connecting Dots 3. And by the way, I'd like to mention how I'm being censored. So if you want to stay on top, the best way to, is to go directly to Connecting Dots 2 channel and see my uploads directly there. I'm, this is the best way. You know, there's more subscribers joining yet. For some reason, my video views keep dropping. That just doesn't make sense. Okay, so as you can see here, look at that right downtown. I mean, they're right underwater here already. Okay, there. You see the cars here? Okay, so I'm going to end it on this. So folks, uh, get out there and buy some silver and uh, stay out of the storm and make sure you watch um, the radiation network map to stay on top of what's taking place. If there's anything that takes place and you don't have a Geiger counter, at least you know that someone on the shoreline on your, or somewhere on the interior here has a Geiger counter and keep track of things for you. Okay, that's it. Take care, folks. Refresh the silver one more time. I'm telling you right now, get out there and buy some Canadian silver maple leaf coins. Purest silver in the world. Ten times more pure than American silver eagles. Ten times more pure than any government minted coin. It's the type of silver you can make colloidal silver. The colloidal silver solution is a, an immune booster. It's the same solution the astronauts drink when they go up to space. It boosts your immune. It, it, the cure for cancer, I mean, the patent they have from 1987, I believe, I'd have to go look that up again, it used colloidal silver. Okay, that's it, folks. Stay informed and stay out of the hurricane, obviously.